Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. Read the miracle, recite the Quran. Recite it every day and do read it loud. The verses of Quran are all Muslims' pride. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyihi wa mustafa. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah wa ba'd. Dear viewers everywhere, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. Uh, as usual, insha'Allah, would like to begin by welcoming our studio guests. Assalamu alaikum, all of you. Uh, secondly, insha'Allah, we'll begin by listening to a beautiful citation of the remaining part of Surah Al-Insan, which is the chapter before the last of the 29th part. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, chapter 76, Surah Al-Insan. Insha'Allah, Sheikh Ismail is going to recite upon us from verse number 19 through the end of the surah. Fadl Sheikh Ismail. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa yakufu alayhim مخلدون إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا وإذا رأيت ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا عاليهم ثياب سندس وإستبرق وحلوا أساور من فضة وسقاهم ربهم شرابا طهورا إن Inna Allah kana 
حكيما يدخل من يشاء في رحمته والظالمين أعد لهم عذابا أليما بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خيرا الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد uh, verse number 19, 20 and uh, 21 yeah. these verses are continuation of describing the word which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for al-abrar inna al-abrar yashrabuna min ka'sin kana min zajuha kafura verse number 5 furthermore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described uh, plenty of the reward that he has prepared for them uh, in heaven and he followed that by describing why why did they deserve this magnificent reward an infinite life in paradise because they used to fulfill the vow they used to fear uh, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the last day with sins or disbelief they used to offer the food out of generosity to the poor to the needy ones and they used to feed the prisoners of war and the orphans and whatever they used to do they used to do that exclusively for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we use the term liwajhillah innama nut'imukum liwajhillah what does it mean we only feed you for the face of Allah this is a literal meaning Normally we translate it as for the sake of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is a reason behind uh, carefully choosing the term. Perhaps as we scroll down and we go to verse number 21, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا This verse indicates that uh, some of the dwellers of paradise, the elite, will be given the drink. But this time not by youth who are serving them or servants in paradise, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Almighty is the one who would offer the drink to the elite believers of the dwellers of paradise. So the greatest reward ever in heaven is to experience the joy and the delight of seeing Allah, of looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever we say, I'm doing that liwajhillah, which we usually translate as fi sabilillah, for the sake of Allah, liwajhillah means hoping that I will enter paradise as a result, not just enter paradise, and I will be also among the elite of the dwellers of heaven, so that I will get to enjoy seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirmed that in the hadith, when some of the companions asked him, O Messenger of Allah, will we get to see our Lord on the Day of Judgment? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered them by saying, do you have any problem seeing the sun in midday, on a cloudless day? They said, no. The moon on a clear night, where there are no clouds, and it's a full moon night? They said, no. He said, by Allah, similarly, you will get to see your Lord on the Day of Judgment as clear as seeing the sun and the moon, while the sky is clear. So the greatest reward in heaven, above all, is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the other hadith, when Ahlul Jannah settle in paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, what can I do for you? They say, what else can we get? We got everything, everything we want. Whatever we wished for, whatever we dreamt of, whatever never even crossed our mind, we have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will remove the veil and will allow them to see him. And that is the greatest reward ever. So that is the meaning of liwajhillah. La nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We're not expecting any compensation or gratitude from you guys. So I'm not feeding you or giving you any charity. Uh, to expect thanks or gratitude. That's why the companions of the Prophet ﷺ comprehended this meaning and acted upon it rightfully. The mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her, 
Aisha, for instance, used to say to the beggar or to the person who came to take a charity, uh, welcome to the one who came to carry my provision to paradise. So you are the one who's doing me a favor. By taking this charity, yes, I put it in your hand, but it reaches Allah's hand. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْبَلُهَا بِيَمِينَهِ you put it in the poor's hand, in the beggar's hand, in those who are worthy and deserve it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, is the one who will accept it in his own right hand. Uh, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that, that the believers, inshaAllah, may Allah make us amongst them, will be reclining on their couches. By the way, there is a very specific feature in paradise that does not exist in the dunya. You will not get to see the back of any person. How could this happen? I mean, if there is a magnitude of people, you see some faces and some backs. But in, in paradise, no. Everybody sees the faces of everybody else while they're reclining on their couches. You don't have to worry about air conditioning because there is neither heat nor extreme cold. It's mild, it's moderate. Um, some states, they call them garden states, and some states, uh, because for instance, uh, whether it's summer or winter, the weather is very mild all year round. So they resemble it to paradise. Imagine if you are in paradise and there is no heat at all, nor extreme cold. So it's very mild and very moderate. And the branches of the trees which are bearing the fruits, very, very specific feature that if you're reclining on your couch and you see a fruit that you like, you don't have to get up or even search out in order to reach it. The branches will lower themselves to suit and accommodate the person. So if you sit up, they will be elevated a little bit. If you stand up, they will go higher so that they won't bother you. No thorns in the trees, only the fruits which resemble the fruits of the dunya, but uh, the taste is very much different. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this regard about Al-Jannah, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No matter how much we describe what Allah has prepared in heaven, bottom line is, no eye have ever seen, no ears have ever heard of, no one could ever dream of what Allah has prepared for Ahlul Jannah in paradise. May Allah make us among them. Yani, we need to be a little patient. It is just a couple of more years. Let's say 10 years, 20 years. So what? If you're patient, and I'm saying that assuming that you have to live a full term, but of course uh, we are urged and recommended to expect death as soon as we're sitting right now. So we prepare for it. As Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said with regards to keeping balance between working for the dunya and working for the hereafter, he said, Work for your dunya as if you're living eternally. So you have to go to work, you have to get your education, you have to get married, there is your kids. Plan, plan, plan. And do the rightful work. Then, وَاعْمَلْ لِآخِرَتِكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَمُوتُ غَدَهُ But also prepare for your hereafter as this is, you're going, is going to be your last day. Can you keep balance? Whoever keeps balance is a truly successful one. Then in verse number 19 today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, the Ahlul Jannah, while they're reclining on their couches, round about them, or uh, will rotate around them, uh, boys, youth, who will maintain their youth eternally. مخلدون. ولدانون مخلدون. They will, ma they will maintain this youth forever. They will never get old. Similarly, أهل الجنة. إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا. Those servants will be carrying the wine of paradise, the sharab of heaven, the purified sharab upon أهل الجنة. Uh, you would think them that they are scattered pearls because of their purity, because of their youth. حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا وإذا رأيت ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا. And when you look in paradise, 
you will see a delight that you can never imagine and a great dominion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, لَمَا وُضِعُوا سَوْطِ أَحَدِكُمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا A sawt is a whip or the stick, which if you ride in the back of a camel or a horse, you need a stick in order to move it with, direct it with. This stick, how much would it occupy if I place this pen on the cheek right now? How much would it occupy of this studio or this room? Nothing. What about how much would it occupy in, in a country uh, or in the whole world? Nothing. So, the place which could be occupied by a stick in paradise is better than the entire world and what it contains. Allahu Akbar. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسْ What will Ahl Jannah wear in heaven? ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسْ Clothes made of green silk with gold uh, attire, embroidery. They will be adorned with bracelets of silver and the Lord will give them the pure drink وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا SubhanAllah, Allah is, is even describing what kind of clothes, what kind of adornment we'll be wearing. So if we wait and be patient in this dunya and avoid drinking and uh, taking intoxicants, then in, ahl, in, in, in Jannah, inshaAllah, we'll be given the wine, the purified wine, which is sometimes mixed with the kafur, which is called and sometimes mixed with the Zengabil, which is, its scientific name is Zengabar officinalis, and this is a medicinal plant as well. And it is a very great drink. It comes out of a root. When you boil it, it's very good, especially when you have a common cold or the cold sinus and flu and so on. So the wine will be mixed with this stuff, once the Zengabil, once Al-Kafur, and the best of all is a pure drink, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will offer to Ahl Jannah, by himself. إِنَّ هَذَا كَانَ لَكُمْ جَزَاءً وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا This is your reward. And Allah is thanking you for your effort. Your endeavor has been accepted. It is worth of mentioning here to remember that no matter how much we do of good deeds, we can never compensate Allah for one of His gifts or bounties. But this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He rewards us for whatever we did, even though we don't deserve it. Uh, as a mean of justice, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the other seven hadith, لا يدخل أحدكم الجنة عمله None of you shall enter paradise simply because of his good deeds. They said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, because we believe that no one could ever do as much good deeds as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, even me, except if Allah showers, with, showers me with His mercy. So when we enter Al-Jannah, it is because of Allah's mercy. When Allah accepts our good deeds, it is because of His generosity and His divine mercy. May Allah have mercy on us. Look at the shift. This is called iltifat in the Arabic uh, uh, eloquence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us, is addressing us with regards to the fate of Ahlul Jannah. He has taken us into a trip, into a wonderful trip that we are imagining our fate in paradise. Then all of a sudden, Dinu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made iltifat, shifted the conversation he's addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one of the eloquent why of the speeches. So that you won't feel bored. You won't feel like the, 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 the same rhythm all the time. Inna verily, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa have sent down upon you the Qur'an tanzilan on stages, gradually. We have sent down the Qur'an on you by stages. In Surah Al-Furqan, this is one of the things which the Meccan pagans criticize in the Qur'an. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا They said, how come that he didn't receive the Qur'an, the whole Qur'an, as one book? Just once, similar to the Torah to Moses, uh, the Gospel to Jesus, Suhuf Ibrahim to Ibrahim, Musa went to the meeting with his Lord and he got the tablets. Why every other day he's given us a few verses by a dropper? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers, 
استناه ترتيلا اتوك ذا قران 23 years to be revealed because this is not in revelation this is the last wahy which will overwrite and which will cancel and abrogate any revelation and any sharia that came before it so it has to handle everything in details and carefully كذلك ان يثبت به فؤادك thus in order to keep your heart firm and also the hearts of the believers whenever there is an event Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal the wahy whenever there is a calamity Allah will reveal a solution whenever there is a war Allah will assure the hearts of the believers whenever there is a victory Allah will remind them it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not prohibit things or command things all of a sudden but gradually so the ummah evolved along with the revelation of the Quran فاصبر لحكم ربك ولا تطع منهم آثما أو كفورا الله is ordering محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم to be patient نعم why what is the reason it happened when the Meccan pagans uh, tried to bribe the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and there was a meeting in the house of Abu Talib they offered him wealth they offered him to choose the beauty queens ten of them and give them to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as his wives or slave girls, whatever. We'll just make you the richest. We'll make you, if you'd like to be the king, we'll make you a king. No problem. But drop it, man. Forget about this da'wah. Ignore your mission. Stop talking about God. Let's worship what we worship, and you worship what you worship, but do not call others to it. Look at the answer of the Prophet وسلم, which indicates prophetic strength and azimah by Allah. If you guys put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will never give up on this matter. I will never stop giving da'wah. That's why I was born. That's why I was created. That's why I was appointed as a prophet. Not before Allah spreads it everywhere or I will die. Then I'm excused before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assured them as uh, uh, we will study in the 28th part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is going to spread his light even if the disbelievers hate it and oppose it and hinder people from that path Allah is going to spread his light all over the world and remember and mention the name of your Lord which means every morning and every afternoon. This is referring to the Fajr prayer, Zuhr prayer, and Asr prayer. What about Maghrib and Isha? Well, look at the next verse. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ وَسَبِّحُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا It did not only cover the remaining two prayers, Maghrib and Isha, مِنَ اللَّيْلِ, but also سَبِّحُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا Glorify him in the prayer in a long night through the Tahajjud prayer. Stand up in the night prayer as we uh, recited in Surah Al Muzammil. <coughs> one third of the night, two thirds of the night, or one sixth of the night, as much as you can afford. Initially, it was mandated, then Salatul Layl or the night prayer or the Tahajjud has become voluntary. And it is Sharaful Mu'min. The honor of the believer is in offering the night prayer. In Ha'ula another shift. Allah is talking about the insan who is addressed in the beginning of the surah. These guys, the Meccan pagans and all the disbelievers, يحبون العاجلة. They love the prison life of this world. They say, إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوثِينَ say, This is it. That is the only life that we're going to live. So let's live it. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy it. Because they believe that they will not be resurrected. They will not be held accountable. So let's enjoy our life in this life. And if I, if, if I have time, I would have elaborated more on this verse. And that is the main difference between the believers and the disbelievers, particularly atheists who do not believe there will be a resurrection or death accountability, no return to hell or heaven. نحن خلقناهم وشددنا أسرهم وإذا شئنا بدلنا أمثالهم تبديلا there are different stages in this ayah. Allah is confirming that it is us who created them. The term we, that pronoun, nahnu, 
we created them that is the we which is for the singular who is the royal we who will glorify himself and who else besides Allah who more than Allah who deserves to be glorified or given the royal we نحن خلقناهم we created them وشددنا أسرهم and we give them strength now after we give them strength they thought they are independent and they're very powerful so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interrupts these thoughts and he threatens them by saying وَإِذَا شِئْنَا بَدَّنَّا أَمْثَى لَهُمْ تَبَدِيلًا and if we wish we could have replaced them and we brought other people similar to them with complete replacement إِنَّ هَذِهِ تَذْكَرَ this surah these verses in surah al-insan is just a reminder a reminder of our origin a reminder of the return a reminder of the fate of the believers and the fate of the disbelievers a reminder of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a reminder that we should be patient until we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with faith steadfastness on the straight path until we die in a state of iman ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun remain steadfastness until you die in this condition فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا Let whomsoever wishes take a path towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be saved, to receive salvation on the day of judgment. And guess what? وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ But you cannot will unless Allah wills. Verily, Allah is the all-knowing and the all-wise. يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ وَالظَّالِمِينَ أَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا He admits whomever he wills in his mercy. And as far as الظالمين, the wrongdoers, the kuffar, the mushrikeen, the disbelievers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them a painful torment. We all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and make us amongst the dwellers of heaven. Amen. Let's take a short break. And inshallah, we'll get back to you in a couple of minutes to start reading these beautiful verses. Stay tuned. Recite it every day and do read it loud. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion, and that Allah makes a path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim Al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Hoda Academy, Please visit us online at hudaonlineacademy.com. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy for his messengership for the revelation to be revealed this is not for the human beings to make that decision if a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely truthfully asking for forgiveness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive we have as Muslims a duty and that is to recite the book of Allah to ponder over the verses the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu 
of all mankind since the time of the Prophet ﷺ till the Day of Judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Quran, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, please do not forget our phone numbers, air code 002 248 or 249 and the email address is tajweed at huda.tv. Uh, uh, after we've spoken about uh, the fate of the dwellers of paradise and what they will get, uh, I feel very emotional and I hope uh, via the blessings of reading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sharing with you the meanings of these blessed verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on us and uh, if you can see us right now while we cannot see you so hopefully inshallah we'll get to meet in paradise reclining on their couches where you'll get to remind us that one day we were talking about Ahlul Jannah may Allah make us amongst them okay we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, receive your phone calls for those who would like to read. We're reading today from verse number uh, 19 through the end of Surah uh, Al Insan. And we'll begin with uh, Dino. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ حَسِبَتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤًا مَنْثُورًا وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسٍ خُضُرٌ وَإِسْتَبْرَقُ وَحُلُّ أساور من فضة وسقاهم ربهم شرابا طهورا حسبك ورزوم after we take this call from شعيب from Kuwait السلام عليكم شعيب وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله how are you الحمد لله I know that you're wondering whether you'll get video games in paradise or not and you don't have to ask but you will get إن شاء الله إن شاء الله okay Go ahead and uh, recite from verse number 19. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسٍ خُضْرٌ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٌ وَحُلُّوا أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَسَقَاهُمْ وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا إِنَّ هَذَا كَانَ لَكُمْ جَزَاءً وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ تَنْزِيلًا نحن خلقناهم وشددنا أسرهم وإذا شئنا 
بدلنا أمثالهم تبديلا إن هذه تذكرة فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه سبيلا وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء حكيما يدخل من يشاء في رحمته والظالمين أعد لهم عذابا أليما ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله I truly didn't want you to finish but the surah is over بارك الله فيكم and may Allah bless your parents may Allah bless your parents your parents are very lucky and may Allah keep you this way and even better Yawman Thaqila Shu'aib Verse number 27 by the end We said the mad and the gunna undergoes the uh, for innocence the gunna undergoes the uh, following letter If the following letter is muraqqaq then the gunna is muraqqaq If the following letter is mufakham then the gunna is mufakham So we say Yawman Thaqila يَوْمًا ثَقِيلًا Because the tha is مُرَقَّقَة So you cannot say يَوْمًا ثَقِيلًا And uh, the kasra under the sheen in saying وَإِذَا شِئْنَا Make sure it is verified so it is clear kasra not in between fatha and kasra otherwise ما شاء الله لقت الابلاء I can listen to you all day long. Barakallahu feekum. We get back to uh, Dino to resume. I'm sorry because Ahmed has been waiting. Ahmed uh, from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. We'll get back to you inshallah Dino. Assalamu alaikum Ahmed. Can you raise your voice a little bit please? Yeah, go ahead and recite from verse number 19 please. وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وُلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويؤوق عليهم ولدان مغلبون إذا رأيتهم هسبتهم لؤلؤا منصورا وإذا رأيت سم Ahmed, salam alaikum. Ahmed. Very great. MashaAllah. How old are you? Can you hear me, Ahmed? No. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, great. How old are you, Ahmed? I'm 10 years old. You're 10 years old. Barakallah feek. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you in your family. With this wonderful and uh, melodious voice, I'd like for you to put emphasis on two letters, the Ayn 
and the ha. That is the only thing I caught. I will let you continue, but keep in mind when you say na'ima, not na'ima. And also wahullu, not wahullu. It's a ha. Similarly, if you can repeat this verse and say, innaha ulai yuhibbuna. Yuhibbuna. Pronounce the ha as ha, not ha. Yuhibbuna. That is the only thing that so far you need to practice. The ha and the ayn. Because you'll be reading in every verse almost these two letters. So go ahead and repeat from verse number 27. إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ يُحِبُّونَ And make sure you pronounce the ha' clearly, please. Thank you, Jeff. Please, go ahead. إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ Oh, too bad. قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مَا شَاءَ فَعَنْ نِبْرَاسْ from the KSA. السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرْكَاتِ How are you, Nibras? Fine, alhamdulillah. How old are you? Eleven. ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله وجنا converted to junior corrector citation إن شاء الله our young viewers are most of the callers ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله before you start نبرس I wanna share with you sometimes in America or in the West some elders with Arabic origin I mean Arabic is their native language. They always feel shy to sit in the halqa and recite with us. Why? They thought that these guys who just either accepted Islam a couple years ago or a few months uh, or non-Arab read Quran better than me. So that instead of attracting them to join and in order to improve the recitation, they felt shy. And accordingly, year after year, they never attended and it just got worse. So I invite everybody not to hesitate to call in and practice. See the level of your recitation. Perhaps when you get a few recommendations, that can improve your recitation, insha'Allah. Quran is for everybody. This is, as you've seen, a universal Quran. A caller from here and a caller from there, it's not limited to one country. And you know that most of the callers are, or all of the callers are uh, non-Arab. طيب نبراس go ahead and recite from the beginning please ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم تؤلؤا منثورا وإذا رأيت ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا عاليهم ثياب سندس خضر وإستبرق حسبك نبراس ما شاء الله لقوة إلا بالله Just remember there is a qalqala on the dal Fas juda lahu Fas juda lahu Barak Allah feek I wish I was able to make you to continue But we have the last phone call Before we end the program today Sister Habiba from Nigeria Assalamu alaikum Habiba are you there? Please Please try again Unfortunately anyway we ran out of time And inshallah uh, in the next episode, we'll begin the last chapter of the 29th part, Surah Al-Mursalat. So expect us, inshallah, uh, next week. 
And until then, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. Make us all from among us the people of the Qur'an, who are the true people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and honors. May Allah make us amongst them. Make us amongst them. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Until next time, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman Read the miracle, recite the Quran Recite it every day and do read it loud Verses of Quran are all Muslims' pride. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. But we were chosen to be part of his nation. He gave us a message. And that was Islam So read this miracle, recite the Quran